The number one complaint that I get from people who want to adopt the Blue Zone diet, especially the Okinawan diet, is that they don't have access to the ingredients, so they can't do it and they give up. But I figured out how to solve that problem and it won't cost you any extra money. Now before I teach you these four methods that you can implement to eat exactly like a person from Okinawa or Italy or Greece, uh, right? The very popular blue zones. But there are three things I need you to listen to before you implement these four methods because it's very, very important that you understand how and why you're implementing these four methods so you can eat like someone from a blue zone. Aspect number one. I want you to think with me, with common sense real quick. Just no numbers, no science, none of that. Just let's look at common sense. All these blue zones, there's five blue zones. A blue zone is an area that has a population where a majority of the population lives past 90 years old and they're healthy, walking, talking, right in the mind, just, just very active. Let's look at their diets. But they're eating vastly different things, vastly different things. The Okinawans ate purple sweet potato or yellow sweet potatoes. They ate nigana, which is a very bitter vegetable. They ate long life herb, which is my specialty. Uh, they ate shikwasa, which is a very tart citrus. They ate mozuku seaweed. They ate all these things that you've probably never heard of. And then we look at the Mediterranean diet or pe people in Italy and Greece. They eat things like yogurt and tomatoes and lamb and cheese and pasta and sourdough bread. Now you notice that I didn't say any of the same ingredients because they weren't eating the same ingredients. The carbohydrates are absolutely included in the diet of our centenarians. They eat every day a little bit of pasta. Uh, pasta is carbohydrate. Uh, for sure, I think that the problem is the quantity, right? Mm. So definitely into Mediterranean diet, uh, pasta that has been homemade, such as with uh, flour, not the white flour, more, uh, uh, you know, grain flour, uh, I mean, just pure uh, grain flour uh, is uh, considered the amount of carbohydrate these people they eat. So what is important probably, uh, don't eat too so much sugar, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, definitely this is a characteristic of Mediterranean diet. Bread uh, and uh, pasta are considered part of daily uh, nutrients in the Mediterranean diet. So we have these people living very long, happy, healthy lives. And they're eating such a vastly different diet. And people don't want to hear this, right? They think like you have to be told to eat a certain ingredient in order to live a very long time. So you must adapt a certain diet with these certain ingredients. And if you do that, you'll be very healthy, you'll live a very long time. Now, this is true, but what do you do when you don't have the Okinawan diet? You don't have the Okinawan ingredients. It's very important to understand that that's not how you should be thinking. It doesn't matter if you have the exact ingredients because it matters about how you eat, not what you eat. Now, am I talking nonsense? No, this is what scientists have been screaming from the rooftops, been screaming at me as well, telling me to tell other people. But people don't wanna hear this. They wanna hear about the magic pill, the magic bullet that will help them live a very long time. So that gets me on to my second point. My second aspect that you need to understand is that I am not telling you, I am not telling you to eat fast food. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you can eat fast food and you can eat processed foods, you can eat deep fried foods. That's not what I'm saying. You're supposed to not eat those. And there are foods that are very, very good for you. Uh, if you do wanna hear what foods you should be eating to better your health, that's great. But don't get your mind wrapped around, you need to eat shima tofu, shima tofu. You don't need to eat island tofu. You don't need to eat mozuku seaweed. It's not necessary to live to 100 years old, right? You can choose the ingredients you want to eat as long as they're healthy and you like them. That's the most important, that you enjoy the taste of them. Now, there are some incredibly healthy foods that I would suggest you to eat. Uh, if you're looking for suggestions, subscribe to my channel because I'm putting out videos all the time. I'm gonna be putting out a video uh, about a very, very healthy food that you can make in your own kitchen with the ingredients that you have in your kitchen or you can get from your supermarket no matter what country you are watching this from. Fascinating stuff and it's true, it's real. So there's a lot of suggestions that I can give of what you can eat. But what I'm saying is that don't get so wrapped up in that you must eat a certain food. 
So that leads me to my third aspect, which is, well, what should you be eating, all right? If you don't have to eat the Mediterranean diet ingredients, you don't have to eat the Okinawan diet ingredients, well, what should I be eating? Should I be eating McDonald's? No, as long as you follow three categories, you'll be golden. Okay, so first, vegetables, right? You have to eat vegetables. Now, you should eat seasonally. The Okinawans, they ate seasonally and that benefited them. Nowadays, we don't do that. We don't eat seasonally. We eat whatever we want. Occasionally, that's okay, but you should be eating seasonally. So go to your supermarket, Google what's in season and whatever area you're in and follow a diet based off of that. So for example, the Okinawans would eat bitter melon in the summer only. When you eat bitter melon in the summer, it cools your body down. It has components that essentially cool your body down in a sense that it makes it easier for your body to handle the intense heat. But when you eat a large amount of out of season things, then it kind of messes with your body a bit and that's not good. So eat seasonally and take it seriously. Don't think about the exact ingredients, think about the season because our human bodies are more in touch with the climate. And then next is meat. So you should eat meat because these people from the blue zones ate meat. So what they would eat is whatever they had access to. So I'm not gonna tell you only eat chicken, only eat white meat, don't eat beef. The Okinawans would eat lots of tofu, island tofu. Uh, they would also eat pork. And then you look at people in Italy, in Greece, they would eat lamb and goat and other animals. It's, it's very important to incorporate meat into your diet, but don't go crazy. If you look at all of them, they didn't have meat as their main meal. They would have it as like a side, small portions, and maybe not even eat it every single day. So just lower your meat portions. And then the third one, which is so important, this is so important. This is why it's important because people these days love the keto diet. They love the keto diet. You see where I'm going with this? And the keto diet is so, so bad for you. Like, so I wanted to ask you what you think about the keto diet because so many people are obsessed with the, doing the keto diet. Now, this is an important uh, topic, uh, Burnett, because, uh, yeah, for instance, uh, in the Chilento area, uh, carbohydrates are absolutely included in the diet of our centenarians. They eat every day a little bit of pasta. Uh, pasta is carbohydrate. Uh, for sure, I think that the problem is the quantity, right? Mm. So definitely into Mediterranean diet, uh, pasta that has been homemade, such as with uh, flour, not the white flour, more, uh, uh, you know, grain flour, uh, I mean, just pure uh, grain flour uh, is uh, considered the amount of carbohydrate these people they eat. So what is important probably, uh, don't eat too much sugar, right? Carbs are good for you. Carbs, your body needs carbs. You should be eating carbs. If you look at these blue zone diets, just step back. I don't care if you've lost weight from the keto diet. Think about these blue zone diets. These are the longest living people in the world, right? Look at their diets they're almost 50% or more carbs. The Mediterranean diet, people from those blue zones, their carb portion was 40%, 45%, up to 65%. The Okinawan diet carb portion was around 80%. And these people live to be 100 years old, 105, 110. We've got super centenarians, we've got centenarians, we've got people living past 90 years old. Just look at that and connect the dots. So please eat carbs, don't feel bad, but eat clean carbs. So what do I mean by that, right? McDonald's is a carb, no, you're not allowed to eat that. But what you can do is eat what the people from the blue zones eat, which is rice, pasta, sweet potatoes, purple or yellow, sourdough bread, whole grain bread, carbs like that, they're good for you. So now I'm gonna teach the four methods that you can implement in your life today to eat like someone from a blue zone. Okinawa is my specialty, so that's why I talk about it the most. Method number one, it matters how you cook, not what you cook exactly. Now I already told you the three categories of foods you should be following, but did you realize that how you cook is actually really important? I have an interview on my channel where I interview a Japanese doctor. Uh, she has a birth clinic and here in Okinawa and she only feeds her patients or the moms who just gave birth to a human being a certain diet and she will not give them anything else. Mm -hmm. 
壊してしまうんですねなのでそれを最大限に取るためには生でということでキッチンにはできるだけ生で調理ができるものは生で。And she explains and teaches about something called AGEs, Advanced Glycation End Products. AGE っていうのは食べ物で熱を加えるとできてくる毒なんですけど日本語で言うと最終糖化産物英語で言うと Advanced Glycation End Product でしたっけでこれが毒なんですねだから熱を加えれば加えるほど食べ物に毒があるんです、えー、じゃあ皆さんは毎日結構毒が入っている食べ物を食べてるんじゃないですか<笑>まあそのそうなるんですけどだからなるべく健康にいいっていうのでは熱を加えないと。AGEs are in almost everything. They're not in things like water, but they're in a lot of our foods. It's natural. It happens. AGEs are in our foods. Our body is made to get rid of AGEs. It's made to process them and, and get rid of them. That's, that's fine. That's normal. But when foods have way too many AGEs in them, it makes it harder for your body to dispel them. Now, what things, what types of food have lots of AGEs in them? Processed food, for one, have a lot, very high levels of AGEs, and foods that have been burnt or cooked very quickly on high temperatures. So, for example, you could, you know, an AGE, what is an AGE? A good example is that when you put your toast in the toaster and it burns. So, that is an example of lots of AGEs. It's pretty much the burntness on your food. And the doctor, Japanese doctor, explains is that you want to avoid AGEs as much as possible. How do you do that? By using cooking methods such as boiling and steaming. You're right, when you boil or steam food, you, it's, you can't turn, it's like very hard to make the food turn black, right? So boiling and steaming is very, very good. And if you look at the traditional Okinawan diet, a lot of recipes are using boiling and steaming. And if you look at the Mediterranean diet, a lot of traditional recipes use boiling and steaming. It's very cool. Now, I'm not saying that you can't grill food or, fry, or put on a food on a frying pan ever. Of course you can do that. Look at the Italian diet and the Greek diet. They use put skewers and use fire and put things on a frying pan. The Okinawa diet as well, just not as much. It is okay, but just sometimes. So a rule of thumb is to try to boil and steam as much as possible. Avoid using the frying pan as much as possible, but not completely, okay? I'm not trying to start a cult. Or until you can't do one thing completely and get rid of joy in your life. It's not what I'm saying. But you're not allowed to deep fry. You're not allowed to blacken your food. That's not good. Now, occasionally, occasionally, fine, I will let you do it. But try your best not to. Because how you cook is just as important as what you're cooking with. Method number two is to eat in moderation. Now, the Okinawans practice something called harahachibu. It means to eat until you're 80% full, right? So not 100% full, you want to eat till you're 80% full. This is very, very good for your digestive system and your body in general because you don't want to overload it and overbear it. Now, here's a secret. If you've watched so far, you're going to hear a secret because you're special and you've watched this far and I'm very grateful. When I interview Okinawans, elder Okinawans, longevity Okinawans who practice all these things so that they could live past 90, 95, 100 years old. I asked them, do you practice harahachibu? And guess what they say? They say, no. <laughs> they embarrassingly say, no. And I'm always shocked. I'm like, wait a second. Is there a scam going on here? Is harahachibu not real? I mean, I know it's good for you. I'm actually on day three of fasting myself as I film this. Uh, I know fasting is very good for you. What do you mean you don't do harahachibu? Now, the Okinawans, there was a war that happened in Okinawa that caused a, a large lack of food. So the Okinawans had to practice harahachibu, or not even harahachibu, they had to practice eating until they're 50% full or 20% full because there was no food. And those were terrible times, I understand. But these days, but these days they aren't practicing harahachibu. Um, are they? Or are they not? So I actually had to think about this. And I, and I remember back when I was a kid in America, my family would go to Caraba's, an Italian restaurant, and we would always drive home 110% full, like excessively full. Like I wanna throw up, I'm so full. Have you done that before? I, <laughs> and it's not good for you. It doesn't feel good, right? And I know what it is to eat 100%, 110% full, very often growing up as a kid. Now that's my perspective, right? Do I know when I eat 80% full? Do you know if you're eating to 80% full? Do we have rulers in our stomachs? No. Do the Okinawans know that they're not practicing harahachibu? 
Like, it's, it's very, it's a perspective, right? Like, how do you know if you're eating to your 80% full? What I do know is that I eat with the Okinawans. I watch them eat and I watch me eat and I would compare uh, the amounts that we're eating. And I've noticed that the Okinawans would like eat a little bit and then talk and drink slowly. And then eat a little bit and talk and drink slowly. Because when you are with friends and family, you always eat and drink and talk and it's fine, it's great. I love it. And I noticed that they weren't eating as much as me. Now there is an age difference, but they weren't eating as fast as I was. They weren't eating in large quantities like I was. Um, and I noticed that they actually practice hara hachibu without really knowing it. Now I don't, I'm not saying that I think they're eating to 80% full exactly, but they don't overeat. They don't eat to 110%. None of them are done eating and sigh and then hold their stomach and say, oh, I'm so full, I couldn't eat another bite. None of them do that. It's very, very interesting. So I think, because this is something that's very hard to test, is that they are practicing eating in moderation. They just don't know it because they don't eat excessively. Because if you also look at their health and their weight, they're in a very healthy BMI. They're very healthy. They're very healthy themselves. They're healthy all over, right? They're elderly longevity Okinawans. So eating in moderation is perspective. So just eat until you are satiated. That is the key. And then how do you practice eating in moderation? And I understand it's very, very hard. I have a video where I teach you a bunch of, bunch of tips and tricks on how to eat in moderation because it sounds miserable. It sounds scary. It sounds like you can't do it. I thought that, okay? I grew up in America <laughs> in a time where I ate TV dinners every single day and I would overeat all the time because that's what I learned from my parents. I get it, I understand it's hard and there's food out there that tastes very, very good. But there are tips and tricks that I practice myself that will help you eat in moderation. It's easy and anyone can do it. So method number two is to eat in moderation. That's how you eat like someone from a blue zone because all these people in these blue zones eight in moderation. Okay, so I mentioned about eating in moderation and eating slowly. Now these two things sound a little difficult. Um, how do you do them? Number four method I'm going to teach you is going to be connected to all of this, really. Uh, it's all connected to longevity. Everything is connected. But anyway, to eat in moderation and eat slowly, you can eat with people. That is number four. Now some people might be disappointed by this. Don't turn off this video because people overlook this so much and scientists are screaming so loud and people aren't listening that eating with people is so important. Suzuki sensei, my sensei, talks about this all the time and people are just not listening and he's getting frustrated and he's 90 years old by the way and he discovered Okinawan longevity. He didn't invent it because it wasn't invented by the Okinawans but he discovered it, okay? And he's a cardiologist and he won't stop talking about how being with people, eating with people will expand your lifespan. Can't say that enough. Finally, there are articles coming out about how it's actually one thing you can do to help your health and your longevity is be with people. Hang out with people, eat with your family, eat with your friends, eat with people who make you happy. And if you eat alone, like I do very often because I live alone here in Okinawa, Japan, I have methods, tips, and tricks on how you can make it feel like you're eating with other people. Mukbangs, have you ever heard of mukbangs? Those are super popular these days. Uh, not these days, even like way back when. And, it, and one of the reasons, people are like, why are mukbangs so popular? Like, they're so weird. Like, why would you watch that? The people that are watching it are lonely. They're eating alone and watching a mukbang while they're eating makes it feel like they're eating with someone because that is so important. It's more important than you realize. I say this all the time. Mental health is just as important as physical health. I will say that again because you seriously need to listen. Your mental health here in your brain is just as important as the things that you physically touch to improve your health. The ingredients that you put into your body are just important as the thoughts that you think in your brain and the activities you do on a daily basis. This has been proven by the people who are from these longevity hotspots, these blue zones. This has been said time and time again by scientists who study longevity. Are people listening? I hope so, <laughs> right? Okay, so wrap this all up. 
Number one, it's important about how you eat. It's important to eat in moderation. It is important to eat slowly, and it is important to eat with people. It doesn't matter who it is, but eat with those that you love, that you enjoy being in the company of. If you do these four things, you'll be eating exactly like someone from Okinawa or someone from a blue zone. It doesn't matter about the exact ingredients. Please listen, like seriously, it does not matter about the exact ingredients. Do not get so caught up on eating the exact diet of those in Italy or the exact diet of those in Okinawa because it is more important to utilize the four methods that I just taught you. And also, it's not gonna cost you any extra money because you're going out to buy food anyway, so don't spend like an extra $100 trying to get that thing that the Italians eat all the time. That's, that's excess money that's not necessary. So this will not break your wallets. It's easy to do, it's fun to do, and it's great habits to add to your daily lifestyle. And best of all, you don't need to do the crazy keto diet don't need to do the carnivore diet, you just need to eat a balanced diet. Please stop doing those diets.